Assalamu alaikum. Hello kids. How are you today? Are you ready for the next story? Insha'Allah, today I am going to tell you the story of the first hijra as well as some others. Are you ready children? Now listen carefully. Bismillah. The life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One night, the Prophet decided to take a walk to the Kaaba. He loved to visit the Kaaba at night because he could pray and meditate free from being disturbed. He spent a few hours at the Kaaba. After some time, he felt sleepy and lay down at the nearby courtyard. It was then that the angel Jibril appeared before him. Jibril took the Prophet by his arm and led him to the gate of the Kaaba. There was a beautiful white animal standing at the gates. It was slightly larger than a donkey and smaller than a mule. It had beautiful wings on its sides too. This fantastic creature was called a buraq. When the Prophet mounted the buraq, it leaped into action. The buraq could travel as far as one eye could see in a single leap. This creature was traveling towards the direction of Jerusalem and the north. A short time later, they arrived in Jerusalem and the Prophet saw the ruined remains of an ancient temple. The Prophet dismounted the buraq and walked towards the temple. It was then that he came face to face with all the previous prophets. He saw his forefather, Ibrahim alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, and all the others who were brought back to earth in spirit form. All the prophets greeted Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam with respect and great pleasure. Then they all stood behind the Prophet and he led them in prayers. After the prayers, the angel instructed the Prophet to climb the Buraq once again. The fantastic animal took a huge leap and from the secret rock of the Temple Mount, they shot straight up into the sky. It was a fantastic journey that had only been undertaken by two mortals before. The Prophet realized that he was being transported into the heavens. The other world is commonly known as Akhira or the afterlife. The earthly forms slowly vanished away behind him. Angel Jibril flied like a bird using his wings along with him. One by one they traveled through each of the seven layers of paradise. The Prophet saw his forefathers and other prophets once again in those heavens. Each of them greeted him when they saw him. The prophet went past the gates of each heaven at different levels. When he reached the pinnacle, he saw a blend of rainbow colors and the shape of a tree. This is known as Sidratul Muntaha. No one knew the secrets that lay beyond that tree except Allah. The Prophet sat on his mount and slowly felt the power and presence of Allah descending upon Sidratul Muntaha. He suddenly felt a burst of light. The Prophet was spellbound and then heard a command. The voice commanded that he and his followers must observe ritual prayers 50 times a day. The Prophet agreed and then returned along with the angel. One by one, he came down through different layers. As he passed by the level where Prophet Musa salam resided, the old Prophet stopped him. And Prophet Muhammad wasallam told him about God's command, Prophet Musa salam convinced him to go back and request for a reduction in the number of daily prayers. The Prophet agreed and returned to Sidrat al Muntaha. He requested to reduce the number of prayers. Allah agreed, and the number of daily prayers was reduced by half. The Prophet was happy and started his descent. 
He met Musa alayhi salam and told him about the reduction in prayers. The old prophet counseled him to ask God for further reductions. The prophet agreed and went back to Sidratul Muntaha. This happened a number of times, and God finally brought down the number of daily prayers to five. God announced that five daily prayers would be counted as fifty in his sight. The Buraq then brought the Prophet safely back to the Kaaba. This was the journey of Isra and Mi'raj. The clan leaders of Mecca sought many ways to stop the Prophet from preaching. The persecuted the Muslims who joined the Prophet and now threatened to start a war as well. The situation became worse. The Prophet's heart grieved when he saw his people suffering. When things got even worse, the Prophet decided to ask his followers to migrate to some country where they would not have to face such hardships. It was a time when their neighboring country, al Bisiniya, was ruled by a king named Negus. King Negus was a wise and just ruler who was loved by his people. The Prophet knew that his people would be safe under their rule. The Prophet sent a message to the king and sought support for his people. He then asked a few families to migrate to Abyssinia. The people agreed. They left their homes at night and traveled there. The refugees went to the king's palace, seeking permission to settle down in his lands. When the king met them, he welcomed them and assured their protection. They were soon followed by many others, and pretty soon they were soon followed by many others, and pretty soon about 100 families had emigrated. In the meantime, the Prophet had gained support of many followers. The most notable among them was Umar bin al-Khattab. He was one of the most hated enemies of Islam at first. But as he learned more about Islam, he decided to embrace religion. The Quraysh leaders were now really angry and decided to kill the Prophet. One night, they dispatched men to the Prophet's house to kill him. When the Prophet came to know of their plans, he decided that it was time for him to leave Mecca. The attackers gathered outside the wall, waiting for the Prophet to come out. It was the night of Hijrah. The Prophet informed about his migration to Ali radiallahu anh, and he told him about the attackers waiting outside. He asked Ali if he would sleep in his bed in place of him to confuse the attackers. To this, Ali replied with another question. If I sleep in your place, in your bed, will your life be saved? The Prophet replied, yes. Ali then thanked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and slept in the bed of the Holy Prophet, covering himself with the Prophet's blanket without any hesitation. It was because of Ali that the Prophet was able to leave the house unnoticed. By the time the attackers realized this, the Prophet was far away from Mecca. The Prophet reached Medina and lived there along with his people. There was a ban on Muslims and the family of the Prophet for three years. During this period, the Prophet and his disciples mostly stayed indoors, and Islam made no progress outside. The ban on the Prophet's family was lifted three years later, and he then returned to Mecca. In the following year, his uncle Abu Talib and his wife Khadija died. The Prophet had lost his guardian who protected him from enemies, and Khadija was his most encouraging companion. He grieved their deaths for many months. The Prophet continued preaching about Islam in distant lands. Sometimes he sent his disciples to preach too. Did you like the video, kids? If you liked it, please click the like and subscribe buttons, and don't forget to click the notification icon to keep updated on all our videos. That's all for today.
I will come back with another story in the next episode. Goodbye!